Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Overcoming Graduation with Brian Drury. For anyone who is new to the show, Overcoming Graduation is a show where I work to teach you everything you want to and need to learn about life to live the life of your dreams. Now, for anyone who's been following the show closely and keeping in touch with the social media presence, you know I've been a little bit more off the grid than normal. Now, that has been for a specific reason, and I recently actually had my gallbladder removed. So if anyone's followed the show, it was only uh, seven or eight months ago that I was in Paraguay getting my appendix removed with, with an emergency surgery. And then for the past three and a half, four months, I was dealing with a variety of stomach and sleep issues that had put me at a uh, reduced capacity. So in order to continue putting content out for the world, I had to make sure I used my energy efficiently so that I could still get some stuff out to you guys. I didn't want to fall completely off the face of the earth, but I've had the surgery. I'm a month out. I'm recovering. So I'm starting to feel more like myself than I have in months, and I'm ready to get back to bringing more and more content to you guys and hopefully bring more value to your lives. So today's episode is one of those what Tim Ferriss would call an in-between episode. We don't have an interview for you this week, but we're going to be talking about a concept that I thought was game-changing that I learned at a conference I attended recently. So the title of today's show is called Harness Your Imagination, Create Your Dream Life. So many of you know that Sean Stevenson is both a friend and mentor, what he would call a friend tour in my life, and one of the biggest influences in my personal development and growth journey. So when I attended his conference just a few months ago, the first, I missed the first day, there was all kinds of weather delays, snow was horrible, I ended up having to drive to another city to get on a flight just to make it happen, and it was a two and a half day conference, and part of me thought, is it really worth it? But I knew every single conference I've been to of Sean's, he over delivers, so I said, you know what? It's worth it. These people have become such a special part of my life. I want to make sure I see him and all his friends and get to learn from him. You know, it's an expensive ticket. It's not just about the money. It's much more about the value. So let me get my butt out there. So I went and in the first five minutes of the second day, because I had missed the first day, he delivered enough value for the entire ticket price. And that's what Sean continually does. So what he discussed at the beginning was he said, your imagination creates everything around you. And so for me, I said, okay, sure, in some context, but not in everything. And he continued down this path and I started to feel some resistance. I said, no, your imagination doesn't create everything. It's, there's fact and then there's stuff that you create and you kind of manipulate. But then as he continued to talk, I started to step back from my preconceived notions and open myself up and realize what he was saying may be holding even more truth than I was realizing. So what he described was, if you think about any instance or event in your life, one, think about the times where you and a friend went through the exact same situation, but you both tell the story completely differently. There's different key points. There's different things that you've identified as being relevant or things that really stood out. And what Sean continued to explain was when you are reliving an event or going back and talk about something from the past, you are reimagining every detail. And for you, you're going to reimagine what was relevant, what supports your story, what was pertinent to your story to help you build to the punchline or the plot. So every time we are reliving and going back, we are imagining the best representation of what we can still create in our minds. Now, God knows that changes over the years that they talk about the fish stories where the fish goes from two feet to 10 feet in 10 years. And if you think about it, every time we go back, we're imagining different details or we're forgetting pieces. There is so much complexity and there's so much detail in every moment. There's no way that we could capture every single little piece. So what our brain does is latch onto a few key hooks and key indicators. Maybe there were some distinct smells. Maybe there were some sights that really stood out. Maybe it was some feeling that you had. Your brain is going to put as many of those together as it can to help you log that away as a distinct memory. Now, another interesting thing is when we imagine the future, we are always using our imagination to decide what the future would look like given certain outcomes. So thinking about how we can apply this to our lives in a positive manner, think about the times where you're imagining the future and it's all fire and brimstone. You're thinking if this happens and I meet that person and I see this, 
everything is going to fall apart. We start picturing how things could go wrong. I think back to when I was in middle school or high school and even in college at times, and I wanted to go talk to a girl. And before I would even work up the guts to go over and walk up to her, I would create about 30 different realities of her shutting me down in you know, a variety of impressively creative ways. So in the same vein, I could have been saying, you know what, I'm not even going to imagine the future because I don't know. And I'm just going to walk up and talk to her and find out for real. Or I could say, you know what, things are going to go well. At the, at the least, I'm going to have a fun conversation. At least I'm going to get to know a person or see that this might not be a person that I'm meant to get to know because they're not interested in talking. So to build on this concept and to kind of bring it back to you and how this can be applied to your life. Think about one area in your life today where you are using your imagination against you. This is one of the most powerful assets we have as human beings is the ability to imagine and create and bring new, wonderful, valuable things to the world. What we all do at times, and I'm going to be honest, guys, in these past few months with very little sleep, with constant pain, with recovering from surgery... It has been a lot harder for me to be in a bubbly, positive state. It took me a while to come back and even re record an episode because I was feeling down. And really, it just took me saying, all right, man, you know that's, that's, that's nonsense. Just talk about whatever's relevant for you now, whatever lesson you're experiencing, and share that with the world because that's authentic and that's true. So in the past few months for me, my imagination was creating negative, saying, oh, you're kind of down and out. You're kind of lacking en energy. So when you go to record an episode, it's not going to hit. People aren't going to like it. Or, you know what? You can't do this because you're too tired. You won't deliver good results at work because you haven't really slept. Rather than say, okay, how can I create massive value in spite of being tired? How can I pare down my responsibilities so that I'm focusing only on the key ones rather than trying to do everything when I'm at a lower energy state? How can I say, where can I create more fun in my life versus why am I not having fun? I say this to a lot of people, but your brain is an amazing problem-solving engine. So whatever questions you put in front of it is what it's going to work to attack. So if you say, why is my life so shitty? Your brain is going to say, all right, let me see if I can find some data and some inputs and some answers to that question. So you're going to be looking for the negatives. If you say, what do I have in my life to be thankful for? What are all the wonderful things around me today? What things can I do today to smile more? All of a sudden, your brain is going to say, okay, how can I answer these questions? And I understand it's difficult when you're depressed and you're down and the energy is low. But I've found when I start asking different questions in my life, positive, empowering questions, things start to look very different. And if you keep in mind, no matter what it is that you're looking at, it is your imagination and the stories that you're creating around it. In the book, Loving What Is by Byron Katie, she talks about how everything that we experience in our lives is stories that we're reliving. And sometimes we are reimagining horrible atrocities and applying a negative story of reliving the worst experiences in our life and deciding that that is going to haunt us and hurt us for the rest of our lives. Trust me, I know there's certain pains in my life that I'm like, I don't know if I could ever let that go. But books like hers and many others out there work to help us free ourselves of these painful stories and of these kind of darker, darker stories that we're carrying with us. So again, guys, one, where are you using your imagination in a way that isn't serving you? And how can you flip that around to use your imagination to create the life that you've been wanting to live? Oftentimes, the life that you want to live is so much closer than you think, and it is so much more about what's going on inside you than outside you and around you. And then, always be conscious of the stories that you're carrying with you. And a lot of times we've carried a story for so long that we don't even realize it's a story. We've just accepted it as reality. The more you can question your own truths, especially the ones that don't serve you, the more you can begin to investigate and work through them to free yourselves of the pains that have been holding you down. So thank you guys for listening today. That is all for today's episode. I really appreciate you coming out and spending time with me, and I'm glad to be back. I'm thankful that you guys have been here and been with me through all kinds of ups and downs. So this is a very exciting thing to be getting back to sharing these episodes with you. 
If you felt that this was a value and you are enjoying the Overcoming Graduation podcast, it would be an honor and a blessing if you would be willing to share it with your friends and following and provide a rating and a review on iTunes or on Stitcher. That would be huge for me. I would deeply appreciate it and I love you guys for listening. If you would like to learn more about Overcoming Graduation, you can visit overcominggraduation.com or check out the OCG social media presence on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the Twitter handle is at Overcoming Grad. So if you'd like to contact me directly to provide feedback on the show, recommend people for me to interview, or talk to me about book signing, speaking engagements, or getting involved in my group coaching program, you can reach out to me directly at brian at overcominggraduation.com. And if you'd be interested in joining my group coaching program, which is going on right now, and it's very exciting, and I'm very, very pumped up to be working with people and helping them achieve their dreams faster than they ever thought possible while establishing the mindsets that will enable them to succeed no matter what life throws their way, you can check out overcominggraduation.com slash coaching. That's overcominggraduation.com slash coaching. So thank you guys for listening today. I love you guys, and I'll be talking to you again real soon.